Hey there, geologists. How are you doing? Hmm. Did any of you get to observe any rocks or beaches yesterday? It's OK. Me neither. Well, I did get to observe some rocks I had by my house. I brought them in so we can make some ob observations. Would you like to see? Great. OK. <laughs> so I have this big one. And even though it looks green, it's not actually green. It's just painted that way. But what do you notice about it? Hmm, interesting. I noticed that it was smooth. Many of the cliffs I see by the beach out, beach have smooth edges on the sides that end up really jagged. And I have these other rocks that are rough and jagged. I wonder why, oh, you don't know some of these words? My apologies. I'm telling you all of these descriptive words and you don't know what they mean. Hmm, I think I have something that'll help us with that. Okay. I have this chart that shows us what these descriptive words mean and the textures that they describe. Let's check it out. I didn't have the labels because I'm going to say them as we learn them. The first one that I have here represents smooth. The first rock that I showed you is smooth. Can you think of other things that are smooth? Yes, our skin can feel smooth, apples, and even cups. <laughs> Those are all correct. Some rocks can also feel smooth. The opposite of smooth is rough. An example of a rough texture is a tree bark. What other things can you think of that are rough? I'll write that rough. <gasps> yeah, sandpaper is rough. Interesting that it has sand in the name. Hmm. And somebody else said a nail file. Those are emery boards. And those are really rough. We have a few more textures to learn, so let's keep going. The next two are also opposites that we should know by now. Hard and soft. I would use hard to describe a brick and soft to describe a pillow or maybe a clay rock. Hard and soft. The next texture I have here is woven, and that is used to describe a texture that has pieces that overlap, like a basket or fabric from clothes. Next, we have bumpy. Ooh, like a bumpy ride. <laughs> So that's a texture that might look and feel like bumps. Bumpy. Okay. Oh, this is the texture I was saying earlier. This is jagged. Some examples of things that are jagged are broken glass and rocks on a cliffside. Can you think of anything with a jagged texture? I'm gonna write that on there, jagged. Ooh, a geologist said that shark's teeth are jagged. I agree. Well, let's check out this last texture. Hmm, it looks like stairs. <laughs> this will be referred to as rigid. Stairs are also ridged, ridged, sorry, and there are also some delicious potato chips with this texture. Can you think of other things that have a ridged texture? Ah, great thinking. That hadn't occurred to me. So geologists, let's think back to our problem in question. What textures would you use to describe sand? Mmm, yes. Rough and maybe a little soft too. I actually have a picture of some sand really zoomed in. Let's check it out. Doesn't it look a bit smooth? Each grain doesn't look so rough. Interesting. What textures would you use to describe rocks that we see by the beach? Mm, I would say those too. They could be smooth, they could be jagged, hard, and sometimes rough too. This makes me think. For our model, we should be sure to observe different textures. That might help us see things a bit better. 
But we'll have to stop here, ge geologists, and let's reread the textures that we have on this chart. So we have smooth, rough, hard, and soft, woven, bumpy, jagged, and ridged. Great job. This is going to help us understand our problem a little bit more. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring in a model that should help us visualize why some rocks wash away and some don't. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'm really excited to learn with you tomorrow.